Hi everyone, welcome back to the Luxury Live Show. As usual, with me here is my gorgeous co-host, fashionably Amy, on the side. <laughs> so today we have a interesting topic. We've been talking about like really expensive luxury stuff for the past, oh, most of our lives. So for this, we are going to talk about, and I use quote unquote, affordable luxury handbags. Because uh, it's sort of like picking things from our collections that uh, from a different range, we have low and as well as the more affordable, lower, more affordable, and then we have the higher end ones, but more affordable. So we're just going to share what we have in our collection. And I have one or two other things that it's not exactly the same, but uh, yeah, we'll give you an idea of that, uh, which we think are affordable. So I'm going to, why don't we start off with the low of the higher end? I'll let okay. Amy share her item first. Okay, so um, which one should I go for first? Let's get let's get the Chanel out of the way. That's probably yeah, the that. most high end brand that. Oh, well, I have Hermes too, but I'll just get the Chanel out of the way because that's probably the most beloved brand of mine. That is very you know it's notorious for being expensive. Um, and you know get too much price increases and all and nothing is really affordable anymore but i guess if you really need to buy if you really need to pick something right if i needed to really pick something that is on the more affordable end from my favorite brand um it's still gonna break the bank a little bit okay but <laughs> it's this one <laughs> it's the yes nano. i'm actually sure yes this one yeah, we're twinning on this one. So it is the nano. Uh, it's the it's the nano bag because uh, it doesn't have to be this exact one. But uh, both Cat and I, this is like literally our favorite. Cat even said that she'll replace it. She'll buy one extra to to just like in case she loses her first one somehow. No lie, no lie. Too. I definitely will. I feel the same way, and it's just. It's just one of those things where it, it is still gonna break the bank a little bit because it, it is getting too expensive at this at this rate. Like I think when I got this one, I paid over three thousand after tax. Uh, it's 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 just expensive, but it's a piece of luxury, even though it is small. That it it's so practical for us anyway. It's so it's so functional, and it really brings it really brings me so much joy when I use it, and even just when I look at it. Like it's just. It's just adorable and I don't think it'll ever really lose its trend um, because I think I think nowadays trends don't even matter that much. It's whatever works for you, honestly, mm -hmm. whatever works for you, right? If big bags work for you, great. If mini bags work for you, great. If nano bags work for you, great. If no bag works for you, then that's fine too. Like it's just how it is, right? And that's how I look at it, so... Get the Chanel out of the way because that's probably like it's it's no longer affordable. Like the walks, nothing. I yeah. can choose anything. Right? It's just you know what I have to say. This morning I was, uh, well before I got into this live, I was scrolling LV. We'll rant about LV a little bit later, but wow, I think their prices have gone up significantly, like a lot. So anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'm just gonna pull a comment from Sharon. Sharon, thanks to you, yes. thanks to you too, I got the nano bag too. Tell us, Sharon, if we are over, I'll be exaggerating this little bag. I don't think so. I think another one of our member also got, she got two as well. Yes. <laughs> two of those nano bags. I don't think it's too much. If it works for you, like honestly, if you love it, if it works for you, if you wear it, what's important is that you wear it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. If you wear it, it, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. And if you, yeah. and it's about thinking that no, it's not a real, real bag, and it's functional for more occasions than you think. But obviously, it won't function for every occasion. It's not an everyday bag like a big, you know, like a big medium sized bag. It's a nano bag that is easy. It's light. It's fast. It's great for travel. So. Plus, for today's topic, in Chanel's world, it's affordable. Affordable. So, yeah, go for their nano bags. They're so good. Yeah, it really is. Because, you know, I, I, I want to put it, I want to put things in perspective, too. Like, I, 
I think like if you go for their dad sandals, for example, right, that's like $2,000 right there. And it's a pair of sandals, you'll get a lot of wear out of it. Um, they are also a very well known for being, you know, lasting a min many, many years. Um, but, you know, for, for someone like me, they don't serve me and I'd rather pay a bit more and get this and this to mm -hmm. me is more is is more worth it. Like I think today's subject is like the luxury, um, affordable luxury that really just makes our heart sing and that to us makes sense. Right. And they still in the relative scale is still affordable, right? For Chanel. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, here we go. Sharon saying, no, I love it. So handy around Aaron's travel under a coat. Yeah. Holds the hotel card, lip yeah. balm, and whatever else I need. Yeah, so good. Yeah, this totally. is break. it breaks it breaks the bank, but doesn't break the bank. I mean, there are things that really not yeah. only break the bank, it just smashes it together. But this one is, <laughs> this one is still, you know, it's a little hole, a bigger hole than usual, but still it, a lot, it's, it's so functional, so good. Yeah. This one, everyone can achieve. Like, even if you are just, mm -hmm. you know, starting to work, let's say you're a teenager, you're starting to work, you can save for it. You can get it. You can get it after like a whole summer's, oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure today's, Minimum wage is much much higher than when I was. Oh uh, yeah, I, definitely. I, I, I wouldn't it, be I able to get it in like a few. I would work a little harder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, shall I? Okay, shall, why don't I pick one now? Okay, now <laughs> I don't have the exact. And I was thinking, Michelle, I don't have the exact same one, but I was thinking this would be kind of similar to the nano bag. It's actually the walk. Please don't look yeah. at my walk. <laughs> oh, I changed more colors, actually, I think. Did I it? know. It's even <gasps> uglier now. Oh, <laughs> oh no, now you have yeah, to color it. Marriage. But I have to use it because this is an example. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so weird. Okay, we'll oh. talk about... All right, let's just talk about... Let's get... It's, it's like, like tie-dye now. It's tie-dye. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funky. Maybe, maybe I should send this walk to that tenor guy oh. and let him cut it up because seriously i don't know what to do with it oh my god no i, uh, no, I mean kidding. up to you but <laughs> cutting it up is still really a waste <laughs> anyway yes this is a painted walk that i bought in 20 wow i'm losing track of time i think 2016 or maybe 2017 and I got this in Monaco when I was there for work. But it was a beautiful green, this color green. But the color... <laughs> Mimi, you're so... <laughs> Mimi, I had to pull this up. Yeah, it looks great now. I'll, I'll show you the receipt. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure it's real. You guys, <laughs> we only show real stuff here. I don't even know I'm how so big stuff look like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, moisture... Patent leather humidity has turned my beautiful green walk into this tie-dye yeah. walk. It's awful. I, I should get it recolored. I just yeah. haven't. Yeah, I'll get it recolored in black, obviously, and I'll use it. But coming back to the topic, <laughs> got distracted by this. <laughs> this is an affordable, and uh, yeah, it's affordable in Chanel's world. So if you are not into this because you feel like you want to keep your phone and today's world compared to when i first got it you know phones are slim come some of phones are slimmer they're smaller you can get even the flip phone from samsung and you don't even need to bring a lot of cards out anymore you can put everything in your phone everything is digital so it makes more sense today to own a walk or a nano bag and if you don't want to pay like twelve thousand dollars for a chanel classic small you get a bit of that, not in this shape, like the or the original black one, that touch of it, caviar or whatever, and it's, I have to do this, quote, affordable, affordable. Yeah. It's functional. Uh, you can put more things, obviously, compared to the Nano. And it looks like a little bag. It does look like a little bag. Not this one, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I guess, you know, uh, you can still, like, because the walks are technically a small leather good, so they have to price it still 
like it's not reasonable, but it still has to be a bit more reasonable, right? So uh, it will be lower than their regular handbags. Uh, mind you, if you get a very intricate one, like a seasonal, very intricate one, they can charge you a lot for it. But like if you get the most not basic, but like, you know, just their simple walk with the CC. The classic and I think those are, do they run around 4,000 now? I think with taxes, like 3,000 um, something plus tax in Canada. Yeah, yeah, plus that's about just under four. Yeah. And if you get it in Paris, it's probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so you know, on the relative scale, you're paying a little bit more for the, like a little bit more like than this for this and you know save a little longer um but mm. you get a real quote-unquote bag right it's it actually yeah. fits a phone so yeah there's that the only thing <laughs> that if you live in singapore please don't get paid don't get picked and leather oh you know it it's breaks really, my heart. Yeah. which is why sometimes i say like people still ding me for getting black bags to this day but you know what black is always safe you don't have to worry about it yeah, and like for me, I, I we don't have the super hot humidity weather, but we have the super cold. <laughs> we have snow, we have rain, so you know, black is always safe. It's always yeah. Safe. Everything on the interior is perfect. Actually, it's beautiful, but it's the it's the outer layer. So it's, it's just, so yeah. strange. So so strange. Anyway, okay, moving on. Okay, are we moving to a different brand? Uh, yeah. I, I don't have any more like affordable. <laughs> I'll do I'll do Hermes because that's the only example I have. And even though my version is not the most affordable version, but if you just get their, you know, not the touch version, uh, I really think this mm. bag is affordable. Honestly, this bag, the regular just Clemence leather, no touch trim, anything like that. Yeah. Um, is probably the same price as this. It is. <laughs> like nowadays. It's probably the same price as this, if not. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Like some depends which which mini like which nano yeah. bag you get, right? Some seasons are very expensive. Some this can be more less expensive even. So I'll say um, I don't have the mini Evelyn because otherwise that would be a good choice. But like in my collection, this is you know in the Hermes world, uh, still a very affordable bag. Also very usable. This one is very usable. It really fits a lot this is not a big bag but to me it's it's a generous size bag fits a lot um and you get a piece of Hermes right like if you're really not into their quota bags right which is understandable and you don't want to chase anything um this is this is a reasonable price item that you still get the quality you still get a sense of the leather their workmanship so yeah yeah, that's a good one. That really, really is. Okay, I don't have any. Um, yeah, I don't have any like affordable ones from Hermes. If I had a Picotin as well, I would definitely say that is the best. Or the Mini Evelyn, right? The Mini mm -hmm. Evelyn would be another one because I think in Singapore it's under, I think it's under three thousand Singapore dollars, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So it's like the nano bag. But Hermes. Okay, for me, um, so we're sort of like moving down, um, I'm moving down the chain. So this to me from, I think Bottega. I have this Bottega bag that was about two, when I, okay, when I first, when I got it, it was about just about 2000 or maybe less. I can't remember now. Oh my gosh. My brain cells are just like, uh. so, but this is, a nice little cute bag from Bottega. And I got it in the weaving leather. The, uh, their smaller bags are still more affordable because Bottega is well known for their leather and they price it as such. Their bigger bags are very, very expensive. I feel like their, uh, what was it? The pouch, not the pouch, the cassette bag when it came out. It was all the rage, it's so beautiful, but it was quite pricey. And now it's even more. So if you're thinking about like you love Bottega, you love the quality and you actually like this classic, you know, weaving. I like the pouch. I actually really like that. This or the mini Jody, if you're into that top handle cute bag, I think the mini Jody is also 
a good purchase, like an affordable version from, from Bottega. The one that we spoke of several live streams ago was the mini loop. Everyone was just shocked at the introductory price from Bottega. It was below 2,000 Singapore dollars. If I'm not mistaken, it was 1,600. It was a full bag, full bag. That was several lives. It's totally gone up above 2,000. It's still affordable. And I know a lot of people who have it, they enjoy it. So yeah, this range, the smaller bag range from Bottega, I, I think gives you the bag, gives you that entry price. And again, doesn't break the bank. Yeah, I really love this one because if you're not into the logos and mm -hmm. if you're not so concerned about, you know, resale value that we talk about, um, this one is such a great one. It's also very fashionable. It's like it's super yeah. cute, right? It's super cute. You can feel the leather. It's so soft. Yeah, this is a great one. Yeah. And it's also uh, a great conversational piece because it's really, it's really uh, for, for people that don't know bags, right? That don't know their brands, uh, but they may, they might see you wear it and then, you know, you were just hanging out with them like friends. Like we had some scenarios mm -hmm. last time on, on our last live. Like if you're just going out for brunch with your uh, classmates from many years ago, right? Reunion. This is the bag um, you bring. Yeah, it's a conversational piece. If they don't know yeah. bags, it'll be like, oh, yeah, this is. You know, the weaving, the leather. Yeah. And you know, I want to add one more thing about Bottega as well, is that they have every color under the yeah. sky. That's another thing that you would know, will realize if you go into the store and you ask them, can you open the drawer? And you'll be like, it's like candy. It's so pleasant to the eyes. And there's any color that you go, I got my green, but if you love lavender or purple or violet you've got every single shade pink red pink magenta so that's also i guess personalizing a rather plain looking bag you know simple but personalizing it to your preference color so if you go for a color from chanel either they're super super hot to get yeah you can't get hot color for the season and they could be priced you know if they if that particular bag they are priced higher so yeah Color. Awesome. Okay, so I think I'll move on to LV. And sure. then I'll show... Um, well, I'm not going to speak about the Neverfull, but I, I guess I could mention it. It's like, you know, if you're looking for a bag bag, the Neverfull, the, the Speedy, the regular Speedy, the regular Neverfull, they're still on the lower end, right? But, you know, everyone has it. Everyone knows about it, so we don't need to talk about it. Uh, but I, the one that I wanted to, like, show is just their version of a nano bag. It's the yes. nano bag. Yeah, it's so cute. Like, to me, like, I'm not so into LV anymore. I still love the brand, but I'm not so into it anymore. I still, like, I, I still... But I still want to keep something, right, that's super representative of the brand and their heritage. So, you know, like, it's like a little, a little mini luggage almost. And it's just the LV version. Um, this being a nano bag costs a lot. So it's it's still, it's still going to break the bank a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's sort of that extra special piece. Again, this, if I feel like LV that day, like if I feel monogram ish uh, and if it goes with my look this is such a cute bag and this is even more functional than the chanel one because it will fit a phone it will still fit even a max phone you just really have to angle it in and you can't fill it too much my phone will have no problems whatsoever i have a mini phone and so um if you have a small phone right if you just have the regular pro size or the mini size it's just a breeze to get it in and out and yeah i think you know, nowadays, like today, this bag is still being sold. There's nothing so novelty about it. But like, I'm just thinking about in the long term, right? If this gets discontinued, uh, then this will become such a special piece because it's a mini ski. It's so cute. It is. Yeah. It was because of this live today that I was thinking, oh, I wonder if there's any other bag. So two bags came out. So I, when I saw this bag, I was like, I wonder if I wonder if I could get one. 
it's absolutely like call for availability. It's always sold out. Yeah. yeah. Once in a always. while, you'll be lucky and they'll be in stock, but um, it's it's still very hard to get. Like if, even though it's more affordable, it's still very hard to get. Just like the Chanel, it's impossible to get sometimes. Yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah. So I I think the other one that I I don't have, but I don't know. It's still something that I and I enjoy looking at, and I sometimes on crazy moments I add it to the cart. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. ah, let's just add it to the cart, and then I'll leave the app. Is the speedy bandol? Let me just is the speedy bandolier twenty? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, we talked about the Nano from Chanel. We talked about the Bottega and then yours on the Picaton. So it's all this, in, I guess when we talk about high-end luxury, you can see our price range is on the lower end, like two, three, I think we haven't touched four. It's like sort of around this price. Oh, is the Picaton four? Depending on, I think depending on the leather as well. But maybe it's just mm. under, maybe it's just touching four. That's the most. So this one is about 2,800 Singapore dollars. And I would say 90% of the people who have shared about this bag, all of you, the Luxies also who have these, this Speedy 20 say that this is one of you, the best everyday bags. It's a little bigger than a Nano, but not as big as a 25. Fits a ton, great for traveling. So... Yeah, on the days that I feel like I want to buy, like, look at it. It's add to cart. <laughs> add to cart. <laughs> I'm doing it now. It's added to my cart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. It reminds me of the Prada crystal bag. Keep adding oh. it to cart. Oh, at one point, right, I was still hesitating and I, they still had it online. Oh, well, they just popped up online. So I kept adding it to car. And then I mentioned it during a live and then it disappeared. <laughs> so it's just how it is, right? <laughs> I know. So yeah, this, this this version has the longer strap now, which, you know, it's not my favorite. But yeah, this is definitely one of the affordable bags. And it's more modern now because it's not so big. And yeah, big bags are coming back, but we have also downsized in the things that we carry. We don't need to carry like bulky, bulky things all the time. Some days you need it and grab a tote, but most days, because we don't bring big wallets anymore, we don't carry a ton of cards anymore, everything is in your phone, it really changes the bags that you use. Uh, some would say, oh no, I'm older, I need to carry my readers, I need to carry you know, uh, paper bag, tissues and all that you still don't need like a giant big bag. Mm -hmm. with, even with that, a 20 would be perfect. So yeah, kind of thinking about it, maybe in the future. Yeah, we have a lot of testimonials right now here. Everyone's really like, oh yeah, my Speedy 20, Speedy 20. And you can just add a, oh, not this one. You can just add a Vachetta strap and it will just look like a Speedy 25, which... Oh, yeah, that's true. It's, that's yeah, true. it's just amazing. I, 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 I did like the bag a lot when I tried it. It's so tempting. It's just the the only, you know, the only reason why we don't have every bag in the sun, under the sun, is just the self-restraint, you know? It's like, <laughs> like okay, <laughs> like we really like everything. In reality, we like everything, right? But can you really buy everything? <laughs> you Use everything. Yeah. yeah, can you use everything? You can't just have to find some stuff yeah. that you you use. Okay, I I, th I think that's all my high end stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I just wanted to show this LV, even though uh, you can't buy it anymore. But um, I, I I'll just say like for me, this was at the time of the. Well, actually, no, this one was more expensive at the time because you know at the time I only had the never full. Um, I had the pochette Métis, but I bought that at the beginning. So that was actually cheaper than this one. And so um, you can't get this one anymore. But if you do find it on pre on the pre-love mm. market in good condition, it's actually very, very cheap on the pre-love market. I don't know why. There are just some bags that just don't do well on the resale, just like the trapeze. Uh, you can buy the trapeze bag for under $1,000. Oh my God, wow. that is crazy. And so, you know... Sometimes it's all also about 
not buying brand new, but just finding these amazing designs that they discontinued uh, at a such affordable price. And if they're in a good enough condition for you, then they're actually so affordable. Very, very affordable. Yeah. Like wow. I probably bought this one at the time I paid retail and it's, you know, the resale value, not, not the resale value, but the resale consignment price is still lower than what I paid for back then, I think when you find it on uh, they have a bunch on fashion files so they always do it's just the condition depends on the condition and the color yeah so before we jump into like uh the other brands we'll talk about this later since i have the app open but i have been seeing several unboxings of this new lv bag i think some of you would know let me show you the side trunk have you seen it amy I think so. Let's see. Uh, is it the one that Jerusha just bought? I think it is. It is. It is. So this is one. It it's like a side, like a side trunk. Yeah, I saw it on her channel. Yeah. <laughs> I saw her. But I haven't it. seen it going around. I've I've seen several unboxings. I think uh, Dale got it, and several YouTubers bought it. Mm. So I was like, oh, let's take a look at it. I'm I'm shocked. It's expensive. I, I don't, it's just um, I don't know why it's so expensive. It's <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a runway it's like piece. Five over a thousand dollars. It's five over a thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's because and, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, because we were talking about affordable luxury today. And I was in my head, I'm like, okay, thousand, two thousand, thousand. And and as I was scrolling through the app. Everything was like three, four, five. Yeah. What happened? What happened, LV? <laughs> Where are your ones and I think there's the name trunk on the names. That that's why it's more expensive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll talk about it later. But has then has there been a huge price increase lately that everything is at least a three in front now? So the only thing that I found with the two in front that seems, you know, um, an optical illusion, maybe like, oh, it's cheaper. Everything is three or four. That's the common yeah. number that I see as I scroll through the app. There's even eights. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I think you just get numb. Like I, 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 I didn't really browse LV recently, but I'm pretty sure if I see it, I'd be like, oh yeah. It's just like that kind of price where you're like numb to it. It doesn't mean True. that I'm. It doesn't mean that I'm insensitive to it, but it's just like, it, it's just like the prices now, right? Because mm. we're talking about affordable luxury, and yet they're still very unaffordable. The ones that we've shown so far, like again, it's all relative. Like if it's really unaffordable for you, then you're watching the wrong channel, right? Like bye. Yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. you know what I mean? Like in the grand scheme of things, comparing comparing right Com we're comparing right now <laughs> yeah we're comparing so it was interesting it was an interesting discovery because of the mind that sometimes you look at it you don't really think of it but something like oh wow what a difference what a difference okay let's yeah, go into I think the I'm next done with all the high-end you you as well okay yeah. so let's move on to the well the majority of people will say this is affordable luxury so yeah. most of us will probably know what we're going to say, but I'll let Amy <laughs> pick first. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's, it's a brand that, um, it's not that it just popped up on our radar. We own those, that brand, but it's just like, it's just become so popular. <laughs> um, it, what can I say? It starts with the letter L, lends with the letter G, so... <laughs> <laughs> Long shot. Um, there's just so many to show. I'm not gonna show every single one, but yeah, oh my god, it's a I, lot. Now. I can show you the one I just used. Yeah, uh, well, I just used these two on my trip, and I, I was, you know, I was saying in um in my recent video that I'm gonna talk about what I packed. So, well, these two are essentially what um, i find to be essentials for packing for my any future trips right uh, this one for sure for any tropical trips um but this one this is my travel luggage 
from Longchamp and it's just like the best bag ever. You, even if you can't get this version, I I think just get the size. It's it's such a great bag for uh, just it's such a great bag for everything. Like as your personal item, don't fill it because it dimension wise they are actually a bit bigger than the minimum requirement, the maximum requirement. Sorry. The maximum requirement for under the seat in front of you so you don't you cannot fill it it has to still be able to mold under the seat of your chair uh in the plane i mean uh, but otherwise in the hotel during going from places to places and leaving the hotel going to the airport it's such a great bag you can even use it as a gym bag if you want to oh yeah yeah that's yeah, what i'm so doing with my long shop you use yours gym. for a gym. Yeah, I don't go to the gym, but like you can. Um, my version has the detachable strap. You don't even have to get the detachable strap one because after this trip, I, I realized that I never even really like use use the strap that much. I I mostly just kind of like every time I need to grab it, I'm like, oh, and then I just lug it around, mm. put it on top of something. So you can get the cheapest one for under 300 on Farfetch yeah That's our codes and you save mm. even more so it's so affordable and you get so much bag for it yeah yeah and your other bag is the net <laughs> oh well this the other one that i used recently right this one i i used um during the trip as my everyday bag in addition to the chanel bag but you know the chanel only fits what the chanel fits and this one will fit everything else it'll yeah. fit the like the napkins the extra jacket the sometimes I buy something small, I just throw it in. Um, as long as you don't mind that it's see through, because yeah, just that's just the only thing. Uh, I don't bother hiding whatever is in here because whatever I put in here is not super valuable anyway. Like, okay, steal my hand sanitizer, that's fine, right? <laughs> like, that's just the type of stuff I put in here, and it's so handy. Uh, between um, you know, between this and just a regular le pliage, which I have also, um, this one has that it has that very photogenic um aspect of it too like it's such a simple design really but it's so it's so usable it it, it can expand but it can be small too because if you don't put a lot of things it'll just be you know kind of dangling a little bit if you ex if you put a lot more it'll just expand it'll become kind of like that bulbous sack and it's just so cute um mm. it has two different straps most of the time, I never even close this because I'm always getting in and out of this, right? I'm always grabbing my sanitizer, my, like a, a tissue, whatever. And I just, whenever I uh, eat something and I don't want to throw the the paper just anywhere, I just throw it in. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. It's just like see-through anyway. And I don't, and don't close it. So I just go like this and then you can just go. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah. You explained it so well. It's true. Everything she said, true, true, true. Mm. The other thing. The other thing I want to add to that is that it has such a young look. Yeah. It's very youthful. When I look at it, when I see somebody carrying this kind of net see-through bags, I just get this feeling of like very bohemian, you know, you're running in the pier. Very, like you're just, it's just so light and carefree. So it gives this lightness and youthfulness to the bag. Uh, maybe because it's just, see everything, transparency, right? So see everything. I don't care. So I don't know. I really, I, I, I love that bag. It's so pretty and so many colors. Speaking of colors, so I, I have my Longchamp bag. So mine happens to be black, unfortunately. But yes, this guy, I've got my two bags here. Both, did I buy both from Farfetch? No, I bought this from the store because Farfetch, when I wanted to buy it, it was sold out. Mm -hmm. You have the same one in a different color. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. We did not coordinate this. No, 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 of course not. Totally didn't. Yeah, I saw this in store. I was like, oh my gosh, that's cute. <laughs> it is. It, it, for me, it was the color. I was like, the moment I saw it was red. It has blue trims, but the red pops so much. I was like, okay, yeah, this this is mine. <laughs> this is my bag. <laughs> it came all the way from Singapore, probably from the store that you bought it at. <laughs> Probably oh, ship from somewhere possibly, like, possibly. that still stocks this because I think not everyone stocks this. Uh, like this, yeah, it's this not trim. as common. Yeah, and then the bag that I've been using seriously daily 
is obviously this is my work bag now. I just carry this for work and I have all my stuff inside. And now I feel so much organized. I got my Samorga organizer. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it just gives me a bit more shape. I feel more organized. I mean, I was loving it without the organizer because I just dump everything inside. Yeah. But what I realized is because it's such a soft bag, my things were rolling inside. I was like, oh my God, I'm fine. One of the things that I hate is digging and like stirring the pot in my bag. But for it's not too big that I still manage. But now with the organizer, I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm organized. <laughs> I'm organized now. And it doesn't add much weight to the bag because the bag itself is so light. It's so soft. I was just using it uh, yeah, two days ago, yesterday, but also two days ago. And I was carrying, I was like, my God, I really like you, huh? I think I need to get another color. That's really rare for me to think when I like something. It's similar to this. When I, when, when I seriously suddenly realized like, hmm, I really like this bag. Then I will consider one more. I won't go, go like crazy a lot, but my head was like, yeah, you know, if, you, if I ever lose you, or maybe I should get a backup just in case. I treat it like my makeup, like, hmm, just in case. So yeah, that was something that I did think of. It's like, hmm, maybe if they come out with a nice color. At the moment, there isn't any. It's like gray, which it's okay. Black is the best. Speaking of colors, oh my gosh. I just told you about it, right, Amy? Mm -hmm. There's this really hot color now on Longshot. <laughs> <laughs> the new release, yeah. Yeah, the new release. Let me just show it. Valentino Pink. Guys. <laughs> Let me just open it. It actually kind of looks like this pink. So it's not the it's not the Longchamp bag, but it kind of looks like this pink. And maybe Ooh, not, not, not as not as fuchsia as this one. Maybe not as magenta as this one, but yeah. Yeah. It's a Valentino pink. I'm, I'm surprised that it came out with this color. There are two or three new colors. And they don't come out with colors very often with the regular, yeah. their regular size. It's usually the black, the dark blue. They have a beige. Last season was orange. Um, even they white also had a kind of like that teal green almost. Yeah, like an army green, right? Uh, they have that too. They have that, yeah. but it's all there's also one that's like a bluish green. Yeah, not not on long shot. Not on the sorry, yeah. sorry, not on. Yeah, this one, this one has I think this one has to be their spring summer, like next year's color, probably, because it, it's such a nice pink and it's such a nice pink. Pink. now. I'm dead, like Clara said. <laughs> Honestly, it, it took me a, a lot of self-restraint not to add the cart because like it, it, it is in my cart right now. I just haven't checked out because I'm like thinking, I have so many Longchamp bags myself and I have all the sizes already. I literally do because <laughs> I just bought another one. But like um, in the end, I know which sizes work for me the best. So if I'm going to buy another one, it'll be the same size. <laughs> it's either the travel size or like, I actually like the small size with the short top handle. That's like my favorite size, actually. Or the, the mini is good, um, but they don't make the mini one. So in, in that one, in that regular uh, yes. nylon. So it's in my cart. It's in my I cart. Know. I don't know if I should add it because like I have this, I already have. I have this right like this one is pretty too it has the red trim which is what got me to buy it because of the red trim but it's like a really nice color yeah but it's it's like ugh, when does it stop so i'm like when trying to not stop? add it to, like I'm that trying is to when you know it's affordable it luxury okay because you're like <laughs> what <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and okay, so this season, uh, we should, far, you know what, far, no, Farfetch, Longchamp should pay us money, okay, seriously. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this season, in the official Longchamp site, so not not only, not in just Farfetch, I think Farfetch, their stock moves pretty fast, especially for hot items. So in the official site, you can see there are like three or four new colors. There's this, this, this color, there's this green, which is like the banner green, this green. I, I stalked myself. I said, okay, no, no, no. Okay, don't go crazy. I stalked myself. Yeah, but I didn't really to. like the pink. <laughs> There's a full white, like ice white, white. Beautiful. And there was one more color. It's like a bit of an, um, uh, like a mandarin orange. So mm. yeah, really pretty. I think this, you're right. It could be the spring summer collection colors, which is pretty yeah, good. But it's just like, 
at one point you just gotta you just gotta know enough is enough <laughs> I do have one long shot bet coming. <laughs> Although, you know, the argument, the other side of the argument too is that they are truly affordable. So, yeah. um, you know, not not to buy just to buy, obviously. Like, that's not how I want my collection to be. Like, True. even within my affordable luxury collection, I still curate it. Like, I don't just add them because they're there. But then, then it's just nonstop. Like, I say... They come up with so many colors and they can and people can buy them often and then you can end up with a hundred Longchamp bags which is still in the end cheaper than probably one of your Chanel or, or Hermes bags so you can but you, you, you shouldn't <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't Amy saying you shouldn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I think what you could do is like because they are so easy to use it's sort of getting um Maybe, I would say, like, maybe one or two, maybe not if you like the colors, right? Maybe two, yeah, if it's maximum three for yeah. you to rotate, just rotate yeah. the bags because they, you know, you, you will use them. Like, uh, you were saying that, um, you could use them for the gym. So, I have the exact same version, this one, um, but the blue, and I've had that's my very first Longchamp bag, and this, I'm using it for my gym now because it's so torn and tattered. Even the strap, the, the thread's coming out already. But I have one backup. Because it's cheap enough to keep a backup. Like, just like, a, I have one full black one. So, yeah, just one or two. And then if you see one more, just that's it. Like, don't go... Yeah. Ten. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just, then you just can't. It's just like any bag. Even if it's affordable, you will, you'll feel overwhelmed. Like, oh, I've got a lot of... I've got a lot of bags. Yeah, and speaking to that point again, because, like... Uh, like I, I can literally buy the same bag, like the ones that I normally use a lot in several different colors. But the the reason why I'm sticking to I'm trying to stick to one, okay? I'm trying to stick to <laughs> one is that because at the end of the day, like even if you were to rotate, you know, it's okay. Like I'm not saying it's bad to add many. You, you can do what you want, but like uh like I know for me it's it's okay. It's okay to just not always by the moment you see and it, it's nice right like it's there's always going to be a new one so this pink color is definitely very very pretty like and i think it's yeah. actually it actually is special enough because we like i have mostly neutral except that red for a lot of people maybe not a neutral for them but like that pink is outstanding enough that it's okay it's to add that additional one like that exceptional piece um, but yeah, just just here and there, not too often. Otherwise, true, yeah. true. It'll be yeah. a rainbow unless you're unless you're a Longchamp collector, then maybe. Yeah, like you know, I was uh, this one. This one is actually I I was contemplating adding more colors, but at the end I was like, no, white is the best color for me anyway. Like it goes with everything I wear. Yes, it literally went with every outfit that I wore during my trip, and I know it goes with everything. It's like the this is the most neutral right so that's why i was in the end i was like oh no when they had the red actually the red is on sale if you go to the longchamp site it's actually on sale right now i'm like oh the red is nice and i'm like no 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 like one just one like unless this is broken then i'll buy a new one yes yes but so yeah you we have every size and every like that you need already that you have and then i'm like no no <laughs> <laughs> we love it we love it we love it we love it because it's it's affordable it's actually functional because i use mine for work and i'm using for gym so it's like i i can incorporate these bags into my lifestyle easily as well as i don't worry so much about them with the high-end ones even though they are more affordable i feel more i, I, I i'm precious about my long charm but at the same time i feel even more precious with say my Bottega or my, you know, a Chanel a nano bag, that there's more um, fear in a way. Even though they're affordable, there's more fear that I will damage it, hurt it, you know, I don't know mess it up. So yeah, I think that's why it's just a bit more easy to accumulate the long shot. It's just, it, it, and, and um, have it part of my daily routine of using bags. Mm-hmm. And I saw a comment earlier, which I always do myself because I, I like to bring a nicer, like a nicer bag when I travel. But, you know, going through 
the security on the plane. Uh, like on the plane, you're not allowed to have anything on your lap, right? When they take off and when they descend, so you have to uh, you have to put it either up there in the in the bins or on the bottom on the floor, basically. So I would just put it in a long shower bag, which is already my personal item, right? So. Um, I saw a comment earlier, someone was doing that, which I think is very common. Everyone does that, but like, you know, it's just something that you may not think about. Actually, on my trip there to Hawaii, I saw, oh, no, it was not my trip. Was, was it my trip on my trip there? Oh yeah, it was on my way there. I saw the it? passengers I'm... in front of me, on, in the row in front of me. It was like a lady, a husband, and then their kids young like young kids and she actually had her kelly <laughs> kelly 25 retourne, but she was just like literally like it was just out out it was like literally and i was just thinking like mm, no that's not how i'm gonna treat my kelly <laughs> like you know it's not just gonna be like out and open and like you know just like quite quite not quite carefree i'm not gonna judge right like it's you do what i you found do. a comment um, it's here there oh there, go. yeah, 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 there. I so yeah, so in, <laughs> instead I will put mine in a dice bag, well tucked, inside my longchamp bag, underneath my seat, <laughs> and that's it. Like I keep it safe there and I, I still can reach uh, for it if I needed something. But usually I don't put the things that I reach for a lot in that bag because it's a in a bag in a bag, right? I don't want to do that. In fact, it's in a bag, in a bag, in a dust bag. So it's like three layers to get through. Usually all my stuff is outside, like on the outside pocket. But yeah, so that is a way, a safe way to travel with your nice bags and still have them with you and easily get it out. You know, when you're in the airport still lounging and waiting around, you, sh you can wear it. When you take off, when you get on the plane, you put it back in your long champ, <clears throat> whatever outside bag you have, backpack, whatever. So yeah. It's the best way to travel safely with your nice bags. True. And you can carry them, like you can fold them out. Oh my God, this is so funny. YPF771. Just want to double check if these <laughs> phrases for Long Shang wish are not paid advertisement from the brand. We wish. <laughs> well, actually, uh, it's, Long you know, if they years. ever want to, we would welcome that. And I don't think there is any wrong, anything wrong with that, but we would tell you if it's sponsored. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, but it, I, we would tell you for sure. <laughs> I don't Thank see you. what's wrong with that. <laughs> Thank you for thinking that it is because I would be so, I would be so honored if they said, thanks, here, sponsor a video. Like, <laughs> Can I get more bags? <laughs> I know. I want the green, the pink, pink one? and like white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not Actually, wrong. I thought yeah, you were using the, the, the other one because I saw the pink one a long time ago as well. I was just really restraining. I thought you meant the, the polka dot one. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the pink one. This is the pink one I just saw. So mm. I'm like, oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> It's the Valentino. It's the Pantone colors, right? Mm. I, I know, actually, not Pantone. It's just the Valentino pink. And it's everywhere now. They're pink in the stores. It prob is it the hot color next year? I don't know. It is. It's, it actually, uh, I saw on Purse Bob, it is the Pantone color for, like, Rose Mexico mm. is the Pantone Ooh. color for, I don't know, for wow. now, for next year, whatever. Wow. It's just the color of, I, I. that's why I think that it really is their next, like, spring-summer collection. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's such an easy color to like too because if you're not into reds but you like the idea of red and you don't necessarily love pink, you're not like a pink person. Like you you like pink but you're not like a pink person. It's so easy to carry that kind of fuchsia. Fuchsia pink. Fuchsia yeah. pink, right? It's so, it's so easy. It, it actually is almost a neutral in a, in a very good way. So... Yeah, you don't even have to love pink to carry that kind of pink color. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's bright and cheerful. You know? It's like a Hello Kitty, you know, and like bright color. Nice. Okay, do you have any more bags? Oh, actually, I do have one more brand. Because um, I saw the comment earlier and saying like, oh, is this, is Longchamp even considered a luxury brand? All It's all relative. Like, we're not... Obviously, we're including the 
contemporary luxury as well as like the super premium luxury, but um, this would be a con another contemporary luxury. I think it's worth mentioning because I, I own a lot of bags from this brand and I use it for travel all the time. Mm. And so it's actually the sports sack. Ah, okay. So I, I own a lot of, so similar idea, right? Nylon, water repellent, super lightweight. You can flatten it. Uh, it's very easy to to use, to bring anyway. I will say maybe the style, they have more of a different quirky uh, size style. Uh, they don't use any leather trims. It's all mm. nylon. So it's, it's actually even more, uh, what's the word? It's not vegan or anything, but it's, you know, it's like if you're not into leather at all, like you don't even like any leather trim, then Longchamp's not for you. But this this is a brand that might be for you. And this brand is super popular in Hong Kong, I know, because all my aunts mm. used to wear it. That's how I got to know it, because I, I didn't know why everyone and every auntie, every auntie had a Blanche, uh, Le Sport Sac, so... And I, I was actually looking um, further because I didn't know where it originated. I just I just assumed it was European. It's actually from the States. It's a United States brand, so. Oh, wow, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but oh. yeah, I own a lot of the, the stuff from this brand because they're just so user-friendly. I use this exact backpack um, also in my trip. But I use this exact one whenever I go to any trip because it's a great attraction bag. Like I can have my bottle water, my um, another jacket, whatever knickknack inside. I'm never going to leave anything valuable in that one. So mm. if anyone tries to like dig into my backpack, steal anything, they won't find anything. They won't find anything to steal because everything that is really valuable will be somewhere else on my body. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have several sports side bags and one thing that I love about it, they're quirky, is that they do a lot of collaborations. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah they do. I'm I try not to buy collaborations with high like high end brands unless it's it really, really jumps out at me. So I've only I think I've only got like uh two The Simpsons collaboration. With, we better not say the brand name, but that one. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, okay. And then... Um, Hello Kitty. Uh, Hello Kitty. Okay, I, oh, sorry. Do, uh, Doraemon with Gucci, which I was... I really love, but I was so disappointed with the bag. But I thank goodness I got a Twilly from you, which I treasure. <laughs> mm. Okay, that. So I try not to because, firstly, it's already a high-end brand extremely expensive luxury item then you add this hot collaboration with it you know it's cheating your money <laughs> right from yeah. the bank so, um but with brands like Le Sport Sack or even Longchamp but I don't think they do many um uh, they those collaborations I can have fun with so I had my Hello Kitty with I'm looking at my Hello Kitty bag it's right there Hello Kitty Le Sport Sack I have I have a Doraemon one. I think I have a Doraemon one as well. And you can actually have fun with it. You don't have to buy the high end unless you absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Then you can have fun with your bags with these affordable ones and all these collaborations that you enjoy. Oh, 100% agree. I feel like when it comes to when you're paying that tier of money, like in the thousands, uh, no, no collaboration. Just keep it a bit more classic or just simple right like you can you can buy a limited edition like the different print but but yeah collaborations you have they're, they're to, really to wear too. It. like they're hard to wear unless you're just being sporty that day or you're just mm -hmm. in that mood but like they're they're really hard to wear on a day-to-day -day basis unless you're you're really wearing it because it's just that it's vibe that, that day right yeah. Yep, and which yep, is not yep. very often, first of all, right? Like I'm, I don't dig into this bag all the time. I, I do bring it every trip though, because it is that kind of bag. But I don't travel, I don't know, 20 times a year. I'm not that kind of person either. I travel maybe like twice a year, mm -hmm. like bigger trips. Road trips don't count. That's just yeah, driving. So, yeah. Yeah, the spots I forgot about that. I have my bag right there. Beautiful. 
fun, just a uh, uh, cute. You know, it's the vibe. Yeah, it's definitely a vibe. Have like, so many different prints. Uh, it's actually my mom's one of my mom's favorite. Um, she's like one of those aunties that always have a little sports. <laughs> like every time she comes, her little sports sack is filled with. Like you said, like apple, like it has everything. Like you need everything. Else you're like, you're like little, they'll have boom, boom. it in there. Do, do, do. Everything, <laughs> mommy. Can I have a your butt? <laughs> your butt. Do you have I a scissors? You probably would have scissors. it because it just came from the airport too, right? Like they would have it in the <laughs> in her bag. <laughs> I know. At the same time, like, why do you bring everything in your bag? And then half an hour later, I'll be like, do you have a scissors? <laughs> do you have a nail clipper? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay. That's all right. So that's about it. I don't actually have, um, well, I have some sort of artisan brands, um, mm. but they're hard to get. So I, I thought, you know, yeah, maybe we can do another video on that, on just artisan brands. So, so yeah, I think that's about it. We hope you enjoyed that. Let's go and look at the comments. So I saw a few questions actually, so I'm gonna go all the way up. Well, I'm on the bottom and okay. I don't know which one that, that is from Clara. Does anyone have the box trot lanchon that looks like a mini Oh! Is it, is it is that like the makeup bag though? Is that the makeup no, bag? No, 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 I know which one. I know exactly which one. Okay. Let me just pull it out. It's um, it's kind of cute, but I don't know. I will tend to, I, I don't know how it looks like, but I will tend to, like my answer, right? First impression is that I would tend to not go there just because if I'm really after a mini Kelly, which I am, I won't get satisfied by having that. That's That's just my personal first impression but I, I don't know how it looks like so maybe after I see it I might change my mind but just I don't think you'll change I'm, your mind <laughs> just what I think of like how I am I, I I probably like if I'm so obsessed with the mini Kelly right which I am I, I won't I probably won't it won't satisfy it won't be the same and I'd rather just not get it that's maybe me I think the reason why I'm a fan of the Longchamp bags that I do own is just that none of the other brands like the high-end brand make it like that that is as useful as this right because you know i i think <laughs> to the point where we are so obsessed with these bags that that you you think that it's an advertisement well which is not is <laughs> because the chanel's and the hermes and the lv lv i think the closest thing is the neverfull which is not even the same it doesn't have the zipper so and it's not as lightweight as this. So they don't have what they have. Like Longchamp is actually their own league because they're so lightweight. Oh, this one. Oh, no, I don't like it. Yeah. I, 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 I think like the it. concept is okay. The concept of the bag is okay. But I actually don't really like the mm. giant. It's, you know, you could, you could argue it's like a giant H, but it's just a lot. It's like... um. I think the extra piece of leather at the top, like the, the, the leather tab, is like gigantic. It's like a whole card holder. <laughs> mm. It's huge. It's huge. And uh, I don't know. Which is why I always kind of, like, I mean, I'm sure I scroll through it, but I never I never even clicked on it. Yeah. Oh, they made one with an incognito clasp. It says. Oh, okay. Maybe that might be better. Because the clasp just looks like a lot. I don't know where it is. Okay, maybe on the actual long Maybe on the actual site. site. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe. Not not on the far fetch site. It's just easy to scroll through here. Okay, I'm at the top. Let's see. I prefer buying on far fetch because it's actually cheaper for me. Oh, because tax, of tax? Everything is included. And... And then I use my own codes. So it's, like, it's like, why not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. Sight trunk. You were talking about it just now. Sight trunk. I think it's the hardware that makes mm. it expensive. Yeah. It's 5200 Singapore dollars. It's quite a lot. I know it's, a tr it's designed like a trunk. I don't know. Uh, would, so, you, would you pay? Would you pay five thousand? I mean, if you like a trunk, like if 
if you if I liked it, if you liked it, would you okay. go for it? Yeah, I will. So I was gonna get to that. I was I was gonna say like I think it's because it's one of those runway piece, and you know mm -hmm. you probably saw it somewhere. You were really attracted to it. Um, so there is a bit of a self hype, if you will, like you you're hyping yourself, and and you do like it when you saw it, right? So if I did like it, I I would be like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna try to go after it because I saw it and I really really want it. So mm -hmm. it happens, I think, very often. Not not with this particular piece, not for me, but like if I saw something from Chanel, right? Like saw the hard bag, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try to get it mm -hmm. because I saw it and I really liked it. So I I would pay for it. Like I don't know how much it costs when it was on the runway. And then it comes out, it's a lot. And then you're like, ah, oh, we'll still get it because I might re I might regret it if I don't get it. Like that's the type of, I think that's the type of psychology sometimes that um, that someone can have. And because if we're being honest, uh, aside from the Longchamp, right? And the Le Sport Sack, nothing is really affordable and reasonable, right? In general, right? If you're trying to be super sensible um but you you sometimes do things not because it's reasonable and logical you do it because you really like it and it's yep. based on feel so true yeah I, I think it's a nice bag but if i were to say you do like it would you go for this trunk or would you go for the say like the petite mom the hard trunk yeah yeah yeah, yeah like like that's also something that i do consider like i did like it but it's because it's a it's a take of just the trunk, like the petite mall. Right, so, yeah. I see what you mean. I think it will come down to how much I like the the hard trunk because that one, it's notorious for not being practical. It, you can't fit a phone, really. It's not practical trunk. as well, okay. <laughs> yeah, but this one is still on the affordable side. That that. Oh, that's that hard true. Trunk is not right. Uh, oh, it's, what is that? What trunk? eight it's nine thousand? I don't know, remember. Um, oh. So it will come down to how much I really like that one, and in comparison, the soft trunk or this this one, this one you're talking about. Yep, yep. Is more is more practical in a way. Fair and you enough. Get an element of the design, right? Fair enough. I can't, I'm trying to open the petite mall to see what's the price. I can't remember. But price aside, like I, I did consider like, oh, that's nice. You know, it's got a heart. It's it's like um, you know, when the petite mall came out, it's hard case, and then they came out with the full soft version. It looked like mm -hmm. a petite mall, but it was all like you know, piece layers, and it's. I, I tried that one, Melbourne. the soft one. Yeah, I really ah, like. I think Melbourne one. had one. Did you buy it? No, but I, I tried it in Montreal when I went back in 2018 to visit my mom. Mm -hmm. And I tried it. I tried it. I even showed it in the vlog. I tried it. And Chenny was the one filming me trying it too. I was very tempted because it was one of those things where you're like, oh, it's a trunk and it fits my phone. Mm. And then it makes you think, right? Because every time if anything fits the phone, it makes you go crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's like as if the hard trunk and the soft trunk, soft trunk version made a baby, and now you got a hard at the yeah. side, soft in the middle. <laughs> yes. So among the three, I you know if if I was already gonna go for it, I feel like I'll still go for the petite mall. Like mm, okay, fair enough. It's a little bit like what you said about uh, would I go for. The mini, it's not the best comparison, okay? But right. Or the box, Longchamp, bo what? Fox, box, box trot. trot. Yeah. Box trot. Box trot, Longchamp. Yeah, it's like cousins, but not really. Yeah, it's like cousins, but not really. <laughs> 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 but having said that, I mean, it's beautiful. I, I mean, I'm definitely, when I looked at it, I was attracted to it. It had the elements of the whole bag. I do wonder, like, I'm just going to observe the reviews coming up because um, I want to see how people use it. And that's the beauty about YouTube, right? Uh, where other, you you like a bag, you see something, you, you don't have to rush out and get it. You know, it's yeah. not, I don't think it's something limited edition. I don't know. But uh, yeah, you can just take time, watch the reviews and see how people pack it, um, the usability of it over time. So that'll be interesting to see. 
Yeah, speaking of, I've been trying to look for more videos, uh, not related to bags. I was just trying to look on more videos on on bangles. Like there is a specific bangle I'm I'm really into. <laughs> Oh, this is just, there's hardly any videos about it, so it's kind of like oh, I I just have to go back to the store and try it multiple. Oh, times. I know what bangle. I know you know which one. Like <laughs> I, I I was just trying to find more videos because I'm still even considering the other trims, not just the the ones with the the few diamonds. diamonds. I'm also considering the other one with more diamonds, and I'm like oh, I wish there was more videos so I can see it. And like oh, really that's a tough better. one. That's a tough one. Yeah. Anyway, just got to swing by the store and try it again, I guess. I, I did More give it a me. try. I was, um, I did a vlog with my, yeah, like a few days, a few weeks, a couple, a week ago. And I actually didn't put that part into the video because it was just so short. But I did oh. try it and it doesn't look good on me. Which one? The the, the same bracelet we're talking about? Oh, yep. really? Yeah. It has it a doesn't... very specific shape the it though it's not like these traditional oval shape and i know we're derailing from yeah i know point. and people are like what is this bracelet that everybody it's the tiffany bracelet girls. the tiffany lock <laughs> bracelet. I, i'm about. really like i'm i'm like i'm trying to reward myself except now i, I don't know if i should <laughs> reward myself so often but anyway I, i'm still looking into it right and then i've been trying it multiple times i tried it in hawaii and that that shape is definitely different. Uh, maybe, maybe because even the smallest size, which is the extra small, still is kind of big. It kind of just I don't care. Like it's just there. It's just sitting there, and I don't mind the shape, which is definitely more elongated, but almost like squared oval. It's a squared mm. oval. So um, it's it's a very different type of um, mm. shape. So, okay, let you know why it doesn't look nice on me. It's because my, my, my wrist here is uh -huh. very, look at it, it's very flat and bony. I've got a very bony wrist. Like it's, uh, I think maybe because my hand here is like muscular. Where, where are bone. you trying to wear it though? I was trying to wear it here. Oh, and it didn't look no. nice. Yeah. But if I was trying to wear it like here, like like yeah. if my hand was more, like, I don't know how to explain. Like um, what? I don't know what my hand is supposed to. Okay, you see your me. hand. Let's. Uh -huh. I don't. Know. Okay, let's use the same hand. Okay, put the hand. Same hand. Same hand. Okay, put your hand. Yeah, same hand. Can you see how mine is just like like bulky here and really well, because you have the big muscle here. Yeah. So it looks. It yeah. looks like like this so when i wear that bracelet it looks so weird it look um yeah it just it contrasts too much with the bony part of my hand so i've come to the conclusion that bracelet you need to have a bit of flesh <laughs> like a little bit here oh too and you know, it looks fantastic the also um the weight oh, it of needs that to bracelet sit. it actually like so I'm tr trying to explain it here. Like the weight of the bracelet is not uniform like this one. Like the, the chunkier part actually weighs mm -hmm. down. Like let's say the chunkier part oh. is here. It weighs it down. So when you either do this or whatever, it will always be kind of at an angle. So depending on your stru mm. the structure of your hand, like you said, uh, I definitely have more, like I don't have a big wrist, but I definitely have more flesh that like you can, <laughs> squeeze yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so it will it, it will split like maybe that. nicer in a sense that it won't slide in a way that might just like like, mm. like fall on maybe on you it falls too much. It falls it a still lot falls just... on me, but I I think the flesh catches it a bit more. Maybe <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, see, okay, you, you turn your wrist, you look at that. Yeah. The boniness of my hand really comes out right here. Oh yeah. yeah, I have no like yeah, so when I was I was wearing I was like, oh this it lo it looks so gorgeous, but it didn't go with me. I was like, oh man, oh money saved. You don't have to say you don't have to spend that money. I really like that bracelet. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I'll just try it and I was like, what is this bracelet? Okay. It's gorgeous though. Like so when uh Karis um I revealed it on her channel, yeah, wow. I was like, so wow, nice. Tiffany. Well done. This is a nice bracelet. 
nice bracelet. Plus, and plus I will say it takes me. It takes a lot for me to like something this much to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm trying to do my research and cons and consider all aspect because, like I said before, I always once I commit to a piece of jewelry, I'm really committed, right? So I have to be sure about it. And this is one of the first times, uh, I guess, since this bracelet that I am really, really interested. I think there's, a, there's something about the design that is so, um, it's so quirky, but in a good way. Like I, I really don't mind one side is like super chunky and almost too edgy. And the other side is more that delicate. Maybe you can get the diamond version and it's just mm. more, um, I like that juxtaposition. Uh, somehow I think that bracelet in my opinion, even though they say, whatever they say, like the salesperson, they say it so you can buy more. But like, in my opinion, that is a piece that you wear on its own. Like it just stands out on its own. Yeah. So that's what I like about it too. Because as you see, I barely wear anything on my wrist. I, I have one thing and then I have one thing and that is it. So I like that about it too, because I like pieces that stands out on their own. Um, True. Yeah. Statement piece. Treat yourself, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I, but I'm still deciding between all the like. I I like the idea of all full pave, but that might be too much on its own. <laughs> like it'll Ooh, really see it. Up. Let us know, Luxy. Should she go all pave? <laughs> no, no. I'd say like the full pave is gorgeous. And it's not even pave. I, it's I actually di It's not even like small pave. It's actually chunks of diamonds, like big. Yeah big ones they're big ones but i honestly think that because uh like on on carrier stack right because she has more other stuff to detract you it's less to me that is blending in more whereas if i wore just one full pave like you'll see it because it's there it's just one thing <laughs> like a tennis bracelet you just see the bracelets yeah wow. nice all right kareen what do we consider as luxury if Longchamp is included, what about Coach, Kate Spade, Mark Jacobs, Michael Kors, etc.? Good question. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's all relative. I don't know. I feel like we're not showing those brands because we don't own. I don't even own any Coach anymore. I used to. Um, I still have one, but it's like my mom's house. Kate Spade, I don't have. Yeah. anymore i have a wallet small little wallet mark jacobs i've never owned anything from mark jacobs michael kors no i think to me longchamp is different to me it's still a different uh category from coach maybe in uh it's corinne in singapore yep okay because um i know singapore has everything but like if you go to a mall here in Canada or I want to even say in the United States possibly, um, Longchamp, like it, they will sometimes, if you're in a big, big, big city, they'll have their own standalone, standalone store and it's quite mm -hmm. a different vibe. They'll usually be in a district with all the other luxury, like higher end luxury brands. Um, in Canada, it's... I think our population is too small for Longchamp to have that kind of store here. But here, you'll see a lot of Kate Spade, Marc Jacobs, um, sorry, no, Kate Spade, Coach, Mark, Michael Kors in the regular malls. You won't see a Longchamp one. So I think Longchamp is still its own tier. Mm. Just based on what I experienced. Very good with, observation. Uh, very, America very good because, observation. Uh, like for us to find Longchamp locally, we have to go to a high-end department store. They would be the only ones that carry them. Yeah. So no, they're not super high-end, of course. But to me, they're still maybe a, there is a differentiation between that brand and these other ones. I think Coach can still be okay. Uh, Coach, Coach can still be quite luxurious. Actually, they're, they're quite good quality. They're known for their leathers. Uh, maybe in recent years, it's gone down because it's diluted with all the outlets and all that mm. stuff. But otherwise, their heritage is still quite nice. They're, they're still quite luxurious. Uh, their heritage yeah. is, right? So, Yeah, your observation is interesting because 
in um in Malaysia, there's one mall. Uh, a few of these like you know neighborhood malls, but they're bigger malls. They're not like tiny neighborhood malls. They're the there's there's substantial malls, and in these malls, I exactly these brands: Coach, Kate Spade, Marc Jacobs, Michael Kors, Guess. They have standalone Furla. They have standalone um, shops, but in these malls, you will never see. Never, 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 never see Chanel, LV. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, none. Fendi, nothing. And no Longchamp. No yeah. Longchamp. Uh, no, I do see the spot side. Yeah, no Longchamp. I feel like they also need to mm, mm, place themselves differently from mm-hmm. a marketing perspective because they want to create that differentiation. Like if they put themselves in that mall, then they will be in the same tier. So, Naturally, they want to move up as well. So you don't see mm-hmm. brands like I will not see brands like Mulberry. It's not in there. Uh, Longchamp, um, brands that they self tier themselves. You know, so in w- this list that you gave, they are more accessible. They're in the more common malls. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Would I say I- they're like luxury? Luxury? No, no. No, price but... themselves, the experience, the the the, the warranties, the where mm-hmm. they're made, already set them apart. Actually, the warranty at Coach is very good. Really, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> oh. I think I had one time. I can't remember. There was something that, like, I think there was a stitch that popped or whatever. If you bring back the Coach within. I think they changed the policy though. I think before they would always just fix it, send it away and fix it. Now they maybe just fix it within like a year of purchase, one a year or two. Like it's just base case by case basis, which is actually really good considering LV is doing the same thing nowadays. Mm. Um, so yeah, so Coach does stand behind their products, like on the on the retail level, not the not the outlet level, but even the outlets actually they. Sometimes the outlets they do sell the retail stuff that is really like past season. They're just trying to get rid of the few pieces, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think Co- that's why I still feel like Coach can still be. They are in the common malls, yes, but they can mm-hmm. still be kind of maybe in the com- in the common mall. They're still maybe the higher tier of all the between them. Um, they have a. Yeah, they quite have a good um, warranty or maybe like after service, uh, after service um, care, back care. Post, yeah, post <laughs> post purchase care. Yeah. Okay, here's a comment, and I yeah, you know, that's the thing. There's to me, it's quite hard to differentiate, and mm-hmm. also depends on your age and maybe your purchasing power and where you are in life as well. So. I, I, I do kind of agree, but at the same time, I feel like if you're younger, you're just starting work, you know, still $1,000 is below $1,000, $600 is quite a luxurious price point to pay. So if a brand has an average starting price point for the bags at around $1,000, I consider it luxury. Anything like Marc Jacobs, Tory Burch, Longchamp, I call them contemporary. Yeah, I do agree to... Yeah. Longchamp has expensive bags too. You just don't choose the mm. nylon. Yeah, choose the leather ones. Yeah, they have more expensive bags too. We just don't show them because I don't. Well, you, your one. I is, don't buy them. No, you have one, but it's not. The, oh, yeah, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, not, not. This is sort of out of the ordinary this as well. Like the this is kind of like the never full of like in my opinion, it's kind of like that. You know how never full they make it into leather. So it's like the leur pliage, but they make it into leather. But like they do have their own leather, the leather line. Right which is more expensive too. But then my my point of view is if I'm going to that tier of price, I'm not going to shop Longchamp. I'm just going to put my money towards LV or Chanel. Cars is not going to the same. It's not going to be the same price, but like, you know, just put a bit more money and then try to get that piece from the premium oh. tier. I don't know. I don't know how to differentiate it. It's, remember, we did one live stream that we we <laughs> we were joking about this. Um, was it Neiman Marcus that gave a new tier? 
new to you? Remember, oh. we couldn't we couldn't figure it out. There was one. Um, it's not contemporary. It's not luxury. Like it's the. It was this new tier. That oh. Was, oh, what was it? Do you remember that? I don't remember. I like someone. Someone said it. So some. Someone said it. It was a. It was a new tier in a departmental store. Was it Neiman Marcus or Saks? And they grouped this bunch of brands into this tier. Is up and rising? I don't know. I can't remember. We were like, what is this tier? We've never heard of it. Well, we're not trying to be super technical here anyway, yeah. and like you know, I I do. <laughs> It's quite funny I don't know why. You. Like I, I, we're not. I, like I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because it's a, it's just a question, like a simple question. But at the same time, I think we're not trying to be so technical here. We are just talking bags in the end. We're just showing our favorite bags that we own, right? We don't own everything under the sky either, right? So there's so much more that can be considered affordable luxury. And at the end of the day, like it's how do you consider luxury like at one point I was told and maybe on a rather rude fashion too like mm -hmm. I was told at one point that oh self-portrait is not considered ready to wear blah 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 and I'm okay. like oh, yeah it is it just depends on how you look at it because they are considered the I don't know if that's the same category we were talking last time but they're considered like the creative someone told me what it was, but I forget the terms. It's like creative, ready to wear or something like that. I can't remember. So they're still, you know, they still have their fashion shows. And, but you can't put them on the same pedestal as Chanel, Valentino. Mm. Like you can't because it's, it's, it's a different tier. Like it is a different tier. But is it not ready to wear? I still think it is. Does it mean that? You know, to be ready to wear, does it have to be all made in Italy and France? No, like. It's just a different, it's a different tier. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. So at the end of the day, uh, buy what you will, buy what you like, right? I called it ready to wear because it is technically, mm -hmm. but you know, I guess that person is trying to be even more like in maybe in their minds is like, no, 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 ready to wear has to be Chanel, has to be <laughs> this brands, right? Like, but no, it doesn't have to be. True. Yeah. True. I'm dying. I don't remember that that tear right now. <laughs> it's but it'll bug me for a while in the back of my head. If anybody remembers this live that we did, and we were like, "What is this tear? This yeah. new tear?" It was a comment. I think it was a comment from one of the Luxies. It said, "Have you heard of this this category?" Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. yeah, and uh, we were I like, know what Whoa. you're referring to, but well, I don't you know, know which one, right? We were like, "What is this? We've heard of. We've heard of." you know, high street, contemporary and high end. And then suddenly in the middle, you, boop, you there's new yeah. tier, self, yeah. self-created tier. And you go like, up and, uh, anyway, it was quite a, quite a, quite a debate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw a question from Tammy. Okay. Hey, Tammy. Which size long shot bag do you guys use for traveling again? I forget mm -hmm. if you guys mentioned it before. I think I want one. And thank you, My Age Journey, for sharing it. It's the large. I use the large. I'm just going to grab it this year. Okay. Well, I all I know is that my... Because there's two travel size. There's the, like, just look up Longchamp. Like, even just go to the Longchamp site if you want to just be, like, just see all of the they have. Uh, and then just type travel, <laughs> travel le pillage. And there's two sizes that I'm aware of. There's my size, which is the smaller size. I think it's 45 centimeter. Mm. So this is inch. So I don't know if it's the same. Uh, but then there's the longer one, which is, I think, 55. So think of it like 45 is like the small size of the... Um, keep all. Yeah, the, the LV keep all 45. So this is the size that I prefer because I think the other size, uh, not only is it going to be very long, if you really fill it, because you can always, oh, it will be really heavy. So it's I think really it's really big. It's really, really big. Mm -hmm. It's really big. The 55 is very big. Yeah. This like even with this size, I think we have the same size. Even with this yeah. size, if you fill it, it won't be, it won't pass as a personal item. It will be too big. So you cannot fill this one to go onto the plane and put under the seat. Yeah. 
This is really I think good. The, the, the limit for under the seat is 43 centimeter and it has to be shorter than this as well. So you cannot be filling it to the brim and stuff it like a potato. Like you cannot. Um, but in general, I think this is probably the 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 comfortable size. Yeah. I, let me let me just convert it. 17.7 inch in centimeter. Yeah, it is 45. It's the 45 yeah. centimeter. It's the 45 centimeter one. Don't go for the extra large. Extra large is the 50, 55. Yeah. That one I is mean, if you, if you need a bag that big, go for it. But I actually got it the last purchase and it was way too big. Because I, I at first I was like, oh my gosh, it's a good size. Then when I start to put my things inside, the problem with the, that size, if you don't have a lot of large things, they fall to the they fall to the side of the bag here. The mm -hmm. side and the side, and the bag sinks this way. So it's good if you have like sweaters and big coats that you need to stuff in that bag because it's lots and lots of space. But as a carry-on, it's a little bit too big. This is a good mm -hmm. one. Yeah, this this one is really a great size. I I had to test it out to see if I could get it on the plane. And but I knew I knew that dimension wise, this was still bigger than what you are supposed to to be a personal item under the seat. That's why I didn't fill it. But um, so I I will mention on my um, and the best part. Yeah, it and and it you know you can travel it easily too. I will mention uh, what I packed and how I. Oh, I'll at least explain how I packed, how what I packed on my trip. Uh, obviously, it's not going to work for everyone because this time we, I only traveled with my husband. So there was no kids involved. Uh, there was just between the two of us. And whatever we have to compromise, we are able to compromise. We did. And so we didn't bother checking in luggage. Checking in luggage is great, but, you know, it's... It's about waiting for the luggage when you arrive. You also have to arrive at the airport earlier when you go. Like, there's all these things that if it's not necessary to check in, we try not to check in, right? On our way back, we did check in something, but um, which is why I'll cover that on my future video. But yeah, this is definitely a must. Like, just do yourself a favor and buy one, okay? Like, if you don't have a Longchamp, you don't care, you don't think it's a good brand luxury, what otherwise. But honestly, if you want to buy one bag and it, if, if it's for travel, just get this size and just get one. Just get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that's my first and it's, I've had it for years, like years. Mal, it's gone to so many trips and always as an extra bag. So if I may, I have used it. So when I buy too many things or yeah. I want to put like my uh, clothes that I know when I come back, I need to do a wash. I put everything inside and there'll be my extra bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Great for traveling. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I like this comment. So Longchamp is more like a Prada. Nylon with some leather. Resilient, practical without the Prada prices. Yeah. It's so <laughs> true. true. It is true. Of course, we're, we're speaking in terms of functionality, right? Mm -hmm. We're not comparing brand levels anymore. Not not like that. So it's yeah. really the functionality. Longchamp has its own uh, strength in in the sense that uh, everything is so lightweight. It's so carefree. It's water resistant. Um, it's really great, actually. Okay, let's see. Here, Vivi's got a question. What do you think of Mulberry and Chloe? I think they are more of affordable luxury bags. Mm. Yeah, you know, when I was starting to work those years ago, I I thought Mulberry was the bomb. <laughs> like, so expensive. So hard to get the base water bag and the one that looks... Is that the base water? The one that looks like a briefcase? No idea. Was, okay. I was all crazy about it then. And they had a store in Malaysia... Uh, at gardens and I was like oh my gosh I, if, if only I could own one so to me then it was not even affordable it was a luxury I just could not afford it so now I can say 
they're affordable luxury because you know definitely like Chanel mm. and they haven't gone up crazy prices like Chanel or LV and all that aside I, prices aside the bags are really good the, the, the leather the make fantastic I'm not sure about Chloe I'm not familiar with Chloe but with Mulberry well some of their bags are just beautiful the only thing is it, it's a bit heavy Mm, okay, so I don't have any experience with Mulberry. We don't have a standalone store, and I don't know if they have it in department stores. They probably do. I just never paid attention. Uh, Chloe, I have tried. It's sort of a very trendy brand, I find, and they have their own style. It's more hippie, uh, hobo. No, ho hobo. No, uh, yeah, no. ho yeah, bohemian. Like oh, yeah, and so. Uh, I think I tried getting into it uh, early on on my luxury journey, you can call it. Um, but the first thing I noticed, uh, same comment, so heavy. I, I found I found the the bags heavy. Like everything you decide to pick up is like, oh, it's supposed to be empty, and it's already like there's a, some stuffing in there. But like it's wow, it has a weight. It has quite hefty and. It feels a bit clunky too. Like every time I try to just hypothetically get in the bag, right? Open it, close it. It's just very clunky. Like the steps to get in is not so uh, intuitive. And right already, like I'm turned off. So I I mm. think aesthetic, they do have something going for them. But I just, for, for bags, speaking strictly with bags alone, I am not a fan. Um, but yeah, I don't have any experience with Mulberry, so. I remember Chloe, that really, really, really popular bag. Is it the one that, you know, yeah. has the yeah, 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 yeah. That, that one's was called... what? Yeah, that's the one that I tried to try, to like. Uh, I think shortly after that, there was another version. Basically, same idea, kind of like a saddle-ish style mm, with the lock right that yeah that lock that goes in like that oh my gosh what's wrong with the two of us it's is it <laughs> why can't we remember the names <laughs> need some ginkgo baloba bill baloba <laughs> no 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 it's the chloe drew 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 oh yes wow that used some <laughs> brain cells <laughs> It's like so many years ago, True, too many yeah. bags ago as well. So I always say like too many bags ago. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I yeah, I think it's I, sometimes you just put up with things like these. If in the first place you you don't consider those things to be impractical, and if it's if it's your vibe, it's your vibe. For mm -hmm. a lot of people, and I will say also for me, for a long time, I was not into Longchamp either. Because the only Longchamp that I always saw in the streets was the, you know, just the shoulder, the shoulder one, the usually the large size. And it's just the, um, I don't want to say just, okay? Sorry, I'm saying, I said just, but like, I don't mean it that way. I, it's the most simple trim so the brown trim with the regular nylon whatever color it is usually i see it in black or blue and i was never attracted to to the look because it, usually people really use it as a very utilitarian bag they just fill it and it usually sags in a way that's very unattractive and so that's why i never i never liked it before mm. i never i never liked it but what got me to buy my first one is because it was a limited edition one. And also it was sort of that purchase that I made to commemorate the trip. I always buy something nice that I, to me is like a memory of the trip. So I bought that mm -hmm. my first one in Hong Kong at the, I, I guess it's the flagship store in Tsim Sha Tsui because it's a huge store, multi-level, multi very big. I've never seen so many styles of Longchamp because prior to that, I've never seen any Longchamp aside from the most basic Le Pillage. I've never seen anything else. So after I saw that store and I found the uh, limited edition print and it was a canvas that was pretty much waterproof, then I started liking the brand and really opened my eyes to all the different 
designs that they have. But it still took me a long time to curate what I have now because I'm very picky. I don't just add mm. any color or print or whatever. Like I choose based on what I think aesthetically is pleasing to me that works for me and that I think I, I, I do get use of because otherwise going back to what we said earlier is if I'm blindly adding anything that I like, I'll end up with so many bags and I can't do that. I shouldn't do that. So even when I picked out this travel bag, I, I like this exact print and this exact trim and that's why I got it. That one in red is because of the fun color and and then that filet is like totally different design collaboration. So those are the fun pieces for me still. So yeah, they are still a very lower end tier premium sorry, lower end luxury brand, but by choosing and being being picky <laughs> with what you really like, you can still make it stand out. Like I never thought mm -hmm. that whenever I wore these brands, these bags that I look ugly or anything like that. I still think that I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty like, that I'm carrying them well. So it, it still depends on the individual at the end of the day, not just because they're lower tier. True. Yeah, how you how you dress it up. Agree. Yeah. Oh, Jen. Okay, as I go along. Thank you for that. Okay, so Jen saying, is it premium? Just Googled it. No, I think <laughs> it's a longer I, name. I, it was a longer, it started a yeah. C or something. Seriously, because it wasn't as simple as just premium brand. And I saw another one where it's emerging brand. It wasn't. Both of us were like, huh? <laughs> it was a it was a word. Like it, it was a multi-word, I think. Multi-word, like something, yeah. something, thing, brand. And we're like, no, I've never heard of this. What does that mean? It's, uh, ah, uh, it'll probably make me want to go back to the live and figure it out. <laughs> but then which live the was it? <laughs> it's like, you have to rewatch so many <laughs> just to get to it. It's like, oh, which one? Oh. We've done so oh. many. Yeah. Because we do more than once a week, right? So there's that's so many. True, that's true. It was a. It, this is not. Sorry, no time. But <laughs> it will bug me. Okay, interesting comment from Princess Dean. Ready to wear is prêt-à-porter in a French. Yeah. yeah, which means you buy mm -hmm. and wear, as opposed to. Oh, thank you. So that is the perfect. Oh my gosh, that is the perfect. Um explanation which means that you buy and wear as opposed to couture, couture, oh, couture that has yeah. to be tailored to you first before you wear yeah so nowhere does it say that ready to wear has to be designer never mind premium thank you food. my goodness yeah, <laughs> you buy you wear oh i didn't know that okay ready yeah, to wear yeah. Buy. yeah you buy you wear literally yeah well that is the the word by word translation even in ready to wear is like word by word translation in french it's like it's ready for you to wear it mm -hmm. and so it was never tailored to you specifically it's just generally like generally it's tailored to like whatever size uh, and of course each each company and each designer have their own models so the type mm -hmm. of models body shape they use is also different um you know <laughs> with self-portrait they have very narrow narrow waist and super tall models yeah um, yeah so thank you for that explanation oh okay what oh this one i i wouldn't call this luxury um Jacqueline, how about Bimba Wailola? It's also affordable. It's high street. Yeah, I, I it's high street. Kind of um it's yeah, it's kind of high street. Well, you know, it could be the same category as the sports sack, maybe. It's affordable. I don't know. Have do you know what Bimba and Lola is? Bimba oh you don't no. know. It must be local to you guys. I think they're supposed to be Europe, Euro, European. Let me check. Let me check. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Are they? Are they? Uh, is it European? Ooh, 
I, I've know. never heard of it. Uh, but we don't carry too many brands in Canada. Or if we do, I'm sorry, I just never heard of it because I don't know everything. Oh, yeah, it is <laughs> European. Okay, it's Spanish. Okay. okay. Spanish. Possibly. You know, they kind of they market themselves like high street. Like really like high street, high street. But the prices, because I, I actually went in there a few weeks ago, the store in Singapore, they have one at Ion Orchard. And they're not cheap. They're not really, really cheap. But they market themselves like high street. So, but if I were to compare prices, exactly the way the prices are, they are nylon bags are about the same price as a Longchamp Le Pliage. So from a price perspective, they are quite similar, right? So then you say, okay, then we would put them as, you know, affordable luxury. But the way they market themselves is they don't go, they don't even go into that realm of Longchamp. They, they, the, the placement of their store is with next to Zara and next to, uh, where was it next to Zara or just one floor above Zara next to um, what's that what's that UK brand not um, not Tory Birch e UK oh, brand okay. it's a UK brand mango that's, look, sorry mango mango no. oh mango no was, anyway but that kind of brands like that's where they place their store okay there not at the high end and or not even the mid hand mid range end of the store so even though their prices are comparable from a nylon bag perspective to longchamp they make themselves like high street <laughs> so i find it really hard to say that they are they're an affordable luxury i guess it's mm -hmm. like oh this is an interesting comment like low street luxury <laughs> i love uh it well actually uh while you were talking uh, one of our members she she just dm'd me this graph um again i don't know the source so i'm not sure um but i think i know why one of you mentioned premium so i'm just gonna share it okay well, let me remove this yeah wow, so okay interesting i think it's interesting like that was not the term that we were looking for because i i remember very clearly i had like several different words and it was like but I thought this this graph was still interesting. Again, we don't know the source, and we don't uh, we don't know if it's real or anything. But like, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Absolute brand is on top. Like yeah, Mel Chanel. <laughs> oh, do you have Bottega? Oh, Bottega. Ah, oh, aspirational. Interesting. Who made that? That LV um... is aspirational luxury. Yeah, ah, Bottega at the top, huh? Somebody owns Bottega. Who made this? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever made this pyramid definitely owns a several pieces of Bottega. <laughs> so okay, so going down the the triangle, right? The hierarchy, accessible luxury. I I def I don't know why Michael Kors is there, or Furla, or DKNY. I always thought that those are actually more like the premium brand. Max Mara, I agree. It has to be Max Mara is more just definitely like they have their own. Like they have multi multi sister lines and they can get very expensive, but I don't think it's the same as you can why. Definitely not as Michael Kors either. I don't know why those two are there. Well, it, Michael Kors has some quite expensive things, you know. So it it feels like it's 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 accessible. I would I would put them as accessible. The same as Max Mara? I don't know. Price over. So what is the side? Okay, sorry. What is the one on the side? What does it mean? Lower price? Because um, it's quality over price. Drivers? Price over drivers. quality. It's the fact, like the drivers, like what drives the... Oh. I don't know. That's what, that's the word on the bottom. Drivers. And then, and then the, the arrow goes up and it goes... The higher, the higher, the higher the level, the higher the price, I suppose. Mm, quality driven. I mean, that's the, well, sort of like um, the expectation, right? 
So you're mm-hmm. assuming that the higher the price, the higher the quality. So the prices drop a bit. So maybe they're still quality driven. Whereas premium is, you know, it's not so much a quality driven. It's, well, it's price and quality. Price yeah, and quality. Okay, so I, I will have to disagree with the brandings that they put as examples, just based on what I see. Like Michael Kors, I've seen some really questionable stuff. And DKNY <laughs> uh, also. Again, I, I do I do know they offer a lot of uh, like outlet stuff too. So maybe that could get that could have maybe changed over the years maybe it used to be really good but now it's just watered down because i will i will be the first to tell you that i prefer buying ralph lauren i think ralph lauren to me like sometimes i i i like their well clothes wise only clothes wise right i only shop there for for like kids clothes and things like that I I think Ralph Lauren makes better stuff than Michael Kors. That's my opinion, right? And then I used to buy DKNY like back in high school, and I I don't I don't put, I won't put them in the accessible luxury. But not that's not no. I I will agree with Max Mara. I'll agree with Coach Furla. I don't know very much about Furla, but I'll put him there. Paul Smith, I know is a yeah. I would put them there too. I don't really own anything from them. But I'll put DK and Wine Michael Kors in the premium level. I wouldn't classify them as the same. And then the bottom one, I do agree. Mm. Which is why I said we don't know the source of this. So I, I have no idea if it's <laughs> if it's if it's like really super legit, but it's at least it's um sort of like a guide. <laughs> it yeah, gives you yeah. some guidelines. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Some of it, lah. Some of it. I mean, also it depends on our own experience, right? Like you said, you know, you've seen some yeah. really dodgy things at Michael Kors. <laughs> I don't have experience with Michael Kors. I've seen the store, and it looks very, you know, luxurious. Is it? Though it is in that neighborhood really? mall, and then that, uh. Stuff looks kind of tacky, <laughs> some of it, some of it definitely does. But at the same time, I can, you know, when I browse from the outside, I can see some stuff that looks like accessible luxury. Like they're like, hmm, that's probably pretty expensive. But, well, uh, I think the name is very misleading, like the premium and then accessible luxury. Honestly, I, I don't know why these names are like that because... Um, I don't know. I all right. Who agrees, Luxie? Like, <laughs> I what just do don't agree. <laughs> Sorry. <to> chart. <laughs> okay, maybe you can give like percentage agree. Percentage agree. I think I would give like I give eighty percent agree. Eighty percent. Some of you it. Why, like, like, yeah. to me, the accessible luxury should include brands like Self Portrait and like that's more kind of like that lane i find because they shouldn't be in the like that second level aspirational like they're not in the same same league necessarily but i will put them in the accessible luxury same with max mara but then all these other ones like on the list i just i just feel like they should be the the one below it's oh, it's so good. strange it should good like point all point. the dkny coach Ma- michael kors furla that should be on the one below I'm going to pull a comment. So from Princess Dean, nice graph, though <laughs> it may have been more accurate in the 1990s. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. As brands like Michael Kors have declined. Uh, I just, yeah. I, I, I find Michael Kors, like I don't shop Michael Kors, but like my mom sometimes will go in, I'll be with her, right? And then I just look at some stuff and I'm just like, this is just... I mean, this this is way worse than Coach. Like, I like Coach still sometimes. But Fair I, enough. I, I have to agree. Of course. I'm sorry. I have to agree. Sorry if anybody owns Michael Kors. No, yeah. <laughs> We're talking quality, like, to what I've seen, right? Like, I've seen yeah, what I've seen as like, well. Is this plastic? I was, like, thinking to myself, I'm like, is this plastic? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Feel about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why in the 1990s, could be the quality was fantastic. So, you know, you're, you're talking about a different era. And uh, 
my experience was pre-pandemic, just what four or five years ago when I walked past, I'm like, ooh, that mm. looks four, what two, two, three thousand ringgit for a bag. Um, that equivalent, that's about maybe a thousand, thousand Singapore dollars, a thousand dollars, and it's tacky plastic patent leather. Where's my patent bag? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I I don't want to comment on like you know the style. It's not the, about the style. It's just like the work, even the workmanship. I I can't even call it workmanship. It just looks so cheaply made that sometimes I feel like I'd rather just like I said before. Uh, Michael Kors is at TJ Maxx. Jen says I agree. Um, <laughs> you don't have Maxx? TJ Maxx here, but I know. Um, it's just like I I just feel like when I walk into a Ralph Lauren store. And like I said, I, I only buy clothing there, usually for kids. Um, I, I just feel like the quality of Ralph Lauren is way better than even my Kors. And that's just coming from personal experience, right? Not everything. I don't shop their bags. I don't shop their shoes. But just cute clothing for babies. And I, like I, I, you won't see me shop at my Kors for clothing, that's for sure. But, but not just clothing. Like I, when, when I see my Kors, I think of, of them. Of, of their leather goods, right? And bags. And when I looked at the leather goods, I'm just like, wow, this is hmm. questionable, like really questionable. That's an interesting comment that you made. When I think of Michael Kors, I think of their leather bags. You know, when I think of Michael, I don't think of anything. I, I actually think of like part like just a lot of gold and chunky hardware and and not even leather, you know? It's, it doesn't give me that look and feel. It's a bit well, like when I think of Guess. Okay, Guess is a good, Guess, America Guess, right? They marketed themselves as this really sexy, you know, the, the, the girls in the magazines are like, Rah! and it's all the shorts and tights and everything is just so... Sexy, right? The word sexy. So when I look, think of their bags, they're just fun, glam, just very chunky. And I just get this feeling with the same with Michael Kors, where they try to be, yeah, just tacky. Sorry, I just think of their bags, like plastic, tacky. Well, you, you know what, too? Like, may, maybe because it's, I really see it in America, too. Like, and June's, June's from California. I agree with Amy. Plus, there was no Michael Kors in the 90s. I never saw Michael Kors before. It's true. I never saw it before. I I, I just attributed to maybe like, oh, maybe they just didn't come to Quebec back then when I used to mm. live, you know, in the French side of the country. But uh, and their quality is really cheap. That that's that's it. Like for me, it's the quality. It's not even about the, about the style, right? Style is all subjective, but the the quality is it's just I just couldn't believe it. And like, I wouldn't pay that kind of money for it. And there's nothing wrong with if you want to buy it, you, you can buy it, right? It's, if it's your style, go for it. But for me, it's the quality, the, the material, even like the stitches. And speaking of the style, right? Guess has its own league, right? They're very teenage and I mm. love Guess before. But Michael Kors, I just feel like everything they come up with, they're just copying. Like they're really... a uh, like real copy of like you know you see the Neverfull they'll copy the Neverfull you see the <laughs> something I'm else in a copy of luxury. Like it's really a, <laughs> it really is Shein of luxury Zara yeah. of luxury <laughs> I, I just <laughs> like my my mom probably bought something from Michael Kors but you know she genuinely <laughs> likes something so she bought it which like like I said I'm never gonna judge anyone who wants to buy anything but like. When I looked at the items and I was just shocked that they were that kind of price. And and then when I saw this graph and I'm like, no, 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 no. This is the wrong level for my cool course. That has to be like the one below it. It's okay that you exist. I just don't think you should be in that category. It's not the same lane. No, cannot be. Oh. <laughs> this this chart has triggered Amy. She's like, no. <laughs> Because it's wrong. It's a wrong category. <laughs> it's really like it's it's fine that mm -hmm. they're there in the chart, but it's not the same level, I don't think. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, okay, that is a funny cool. comment. Why is it intimidating? I'm just wondering. I went to a Ralph Lauren store in Georgetown, Washington, DC. 
It has more intimidating vibe than Dior store on Fifth Avenue, New York. Why? Wait, really? I'm telling you, Ralph Lauren is really nice. Like, that stuff is really nice. <laughs> but why? Okay. Is it because it's empty? And it's really big and like... See? No way Ralph Lauren is lower than Michael Kors. There's just no way. I'm just glad that people are agreeing with me. Like, my eyes, like... Are they seeing the... Like, the... the... <laughs> My eyes cannot be lying to me. Like, it's just so weird. So the person that did that chart owns a lot of Michael Kors <laughs> and Bottega. <laughs> well, we don't really... I, I don't... I cannot say that I know a ton about Bottega. I do think that they make very nice things. So maybe they have a whole side of them that we don't know, mm. that they're very high-end. I don't know. I mean, I do think their bags are nice. And I do think that they use really good quality leather. But what I call them absolute... You know, maybe in the tw year 2000, you know, when, when everyone else was priced so much lower than them, they had always been a premium pricing. And now everyone has gone up and they're, they're, they have gone up as well. But at the same time, I feel like they haven't, you know, they haven't like been super innovative. They tried with the whole, Dan, what's the guy's name? The Daniel guy mm -hmm. the left. It did create some hype, right? With the pouch bag. and um, But other than that, I don't know. It's just not. The shoes. Oh, Jewelry. yeah. I mean, they're so pretty. Like, they definitely put themselves on the map recently that we're still mm -hmm. noticing my Bottega for True. sure. True. But would you call them absolute? Like, absolute, you know? You know? Yeah, maybe I wouldn't either, yeah. Yeah, right at the top of the pinnacle. <laughs> <laughs> right. This hierarchy is so outdated. So when did they make this? Because if Michael Kors didn't exist in the 90s, which so I don't know. I don't know if it's true. Maybe but the charts were 2000. When did it come up? Okay, pull it up again. Pull it up again. Let's see oh. if we were in year 2000. Okay. Maybe it's a 2,000-year-old. It's the 2000s. So 2000s. Okay. Hermes, Dior, Chanel, Bottega, Yeah, Prada. Yeah, I don't know why LV is aspirational, though. Even in the 2000s, it would be... LV would be an absolute. Yeah, I would put them there. Plus, um, there's a lot of spelling mistakes. <laughs> okay. Like, Chanel is not two N's, and then Cabana, <laughs> two N's? I don't, two B's? I don't even know. Cabana. Cabana. Is it two B's, or is it one? Dolce and Gabbana. Ah, uh, yeah. Two B's. It's is it channel. two B's? Okay. Yeah, it's um, the channel. Sure Chanel is not two N's. <laughs> <laughs> but they put the Hermes, the right accent on the on the last E. That is pretty good. Because <laughs> a lot of people mistake the accent on the E. They think that it could be this way or that way. It's not. It's accent aigu. So um, what is that thing at the bottom? Gap indie text? What is know. indie text? Hang on. Fast retailing. Or maybe it's just a term. Oh. Fast retailing H&M. No, it's a brand. Oh is it? my god. It is Inditex is the multinational clothing company headquartered in Spain. They own Zara, Bershka, Massimo Dutti, Pull and Bear. They're like the holding. Oh. Mm. I learned something today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll forget. Like Next time, it'll be like, oh, what is that group that represents those Spanish brands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, then. Okay, we are at our two-hour mark. We hope you enjoyed that. Good little debate, I think, you know, when we... Which is why I put there affordable at the title, because I know everyone has their own definition and um how you interpret what is you know, affordable right but yeah good debate lots of lots of categories a lot of new categories <laughs> <laughs> like 
Michael Kors is not there. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed that. So we are almost at the end of uh, the year. Um, as usual, you know, if you haven't seen our calendars, it is on our community post. I think next week is our last luxury live weekend for the year. Then we'll take our two-week break and we'll see you fresh in the new year. So we don't see you next week. Happy New Year. Yep. Merry Christmas. But we hope to see you next week. And that's going to be on your channel. Yeah. And it's going to be... Um... Yeah, it's more like a chit chat topic. It's sort of like uh, reflective. Uh, we'll still kind of link it to luxury a little bit, of course. But yeah, it'll be it'll be a good topic to round out the year, I think. Definitely. And also for the members, right? Uh, we'll mention it again tomorrow. But for the members to remember to send us uh, your homework, if you have any. <laughs> Let's just call it that. <laughs> Yeah. All right, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye.